Hey you guys, it's Halo Doggo here, and welcome back to me doing the under the bed setup. So, um, if you haven't seen my Halo Battle Pass video, be sure to check that out. Um, it should be on the channel at this point because I'm recording this, like, literally right after that. Because, you know, I've been thinking about it and so many people say that Halo 2 Anniversary is like the top tier remaster for like any game out there you know it is the number one remaster it has the best graphics you know but really it's not it shouldn't just be about the graphics it should also be about what it adds and you know halo 2 anniversary is good it's definitely up there as one of the best remasters don't get me wrong as well as call of duty modern warfare remastered i love that one and all the intel cheats that it added it's so much fun but there's one that no one ever talks about and it is gears of war ultimate edition and here is why gears of war ultimate edition is my favorite remaster by far so let's get into the video. So Gears of War Ultimate Edition not only surpasses in the multiplayer standard by, you know, giving us a couple of new weapon skins, you know, nothing really changes with the multiplayer. What I'm really focusing on is the campaign and what that adds. So not only did it get a almost complete graphics overhaul, you know, it gets actual, like, kind of pre-rendered cutscenes. It looks beautiful even to today's standards. It came out in 2016, the original game came out in either 2006, 2007. It looks beautiful, and it plays great on the Xbox One. I hope it plays good on the Series S and X. It looks beautiful, and not only does it look really good, but they also added basic, almost a whole other act to the campaign. This is the biggest reason to me why it is the best remaster. So for all the other remasters, it didn't add basically a whole other section to the campaign that still fits within the story and fits perfectly into the gameplay loop and fits perfectly into everything. I mean, it, it's not like, you know, the best part of the campaign, but, you know, just to have it there is still fun. And, you know, to see how the characters still interact with each other, it's just, it's just cool, you know, to have it there. Because Act 5 of the original Gears of War, you know, it was kind of lacking in the way that, you know, it was only three missions, and one of the missions were basically just you know, get to the train, and it, you know, you could beat that mission in about a minute, maybe two. The mission after that is really cool. I mean, you basically fight every single enemy in the game <laughs> up to that point. Um, and then the final mission is a boss battle against Rom, which is, of course, one of the hardest bosses in gaming history. So, other than that, I mean, really, it's just a super short level, a really cool train level, and then a boss battle like it you know those three missions it didn't really feel like it added very much to the table in terms of gameplay i think there should have been more to the end in the first place so for them to add i think it was four other levels that you know are basically just complete levels that have different gameplay loops of them anyways I thought that it was great. For example, one part that really stands out to me, because, you know, each of the acts have, like, unique things to them. Like, in Act 1, you, you know, it's kind of just the introduction one, but, you know, you also get introduced to, like, all the members, all the squad mates. You know, you're just getting introduced to the game, so nothing crazy happens yet until the end of it when you fight the first Berserker and you gotta, like, open up all the doors. I mean, it's crazy. But it is definitely one of, like, the craziest parts of the game. Definitely was the scariest when I played it when I was younger. Um, but in Act 2, when it turns to nighttime, you know, you can't go in the dark or else you'll die by the krill. So you have to, like, find ways to stay in the light by shooting uh, propane tanks and... Um, 
forget all the ways you can do it. It's been a while since I've played the game. It, it's just, you know, there's a lot of very unique things about each and every act. Like in Act 3, you fight the Lambit wretches, um, and you go through that whole factory section. It's so cool. Act 4, you know, the game is kind of winding down, so, like, I don't... Th there's nothing, like, too crazy about that one either, besides the fact that you fight another berserker but you like are inside of a building so you have to like time the hammer of dawn right in act five you know you just kind of had the boss battle in the train section and it was already stuff that you had done before which is what i'm trying to say here like it doesn't add anything new to the table besides fighting a couple of reapers on top of the train and of course the boss battle what gears of war ultimate edition did was they added four to five new levels, I don't really remember exactly, but they added in something that the original Gears of War didn't have, a Brumac fight. So, I mean, it's not really like that crazy of a fight, but you know, that Brumac is following you through basically every single one of the levels. And it it's intimidating because technically, it's the first time that you see a Brumac because, you know, of course, if you played through the original trilogy, then you know, you fight them in Gears of War 2 and Gears 3. It's not really that big of a deal at that point. But for new Gears fans, just seeing it at the end of Act 4, you know, is like, oh, whoa, you know, hopefully we get to fight that. And then, you know, you never do. But in the new one, you do get to fight it. And it's intimidating as it's following you through each and every mission leading up to when you fight it. I mean, it is crazy what happens in those three missions leading up to the fourth one, where you finally do fight it. The fight against the Brumach, although it's not like the craziest and best fight in that game or any of the games, to be honest, I still think that it adds a lot to the table in terms of gameplay wise and like in terms of the story as well it was just a lot of fun like seeing how you were going to take it down for the first time with literally only the weapons in your hand you know you had no hammer of dawn you only had a lancer and dom to help you <laughs> that was it <laughs> just a lancer and dom to see that play out and like see how you were going to take this thing down which in the end spoiler alert if you haven't already played you know either a 14 year old game or a four year old game um you know you kill the brumac by basically electrocuting it and frying it to death quite literally um so you you start running and then the brumac chases you it has no pilot because basically the boss battle is you shoot the the arm turrets and then you shoot the pilot and uh then the brumac just starts chasing you and then you run it straight into some electrical wires and it dies. Personally, it is better than the corpser fight, at least. <laughs> because, you know, the corpser fight, you're basically just shooting at it and then, you know, it finally falls off into the um, emulsion. I almost said lava. Really think that although it's not the best boss battle by any means, it's still a great addition. And it's still better than what any other remaster has done to this date. You know, you look at Halo 2 Anniversary, although it is a beautiful remaster and remake of the campaign environments and even some of the multiplayer environments, it was still lacking in multiplayer maps where, you know, you only got seven multiplayer maps and then two of them or well, no, you got nine multiplayer maps, but two of them were Forge maps, so you know, it's not like there was really even nine maps in the first place. And then in the campaign, you know, they didn't add anything to the campaign, which, you know, is okay. It still looks great, and it plays good to today's standards. Um, and then when you look at Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, they did add to the campaign, which was great. You know, they added in the Intel cheats and, you know, they made the game look beautiful as well. It came out the same year that um, Gears of War Ultimate Edition came out. So both of them look par, par on to each other. Um, I think that's how you use that word. I don't know. You know, what Modern Warfare does wrong is, you know, it 
puts in loot boxes and you know that was the bane of my existence for basically four years of gaming maybe five and it kind of ruined the multiplayer i mean they added in pay to win weapons and they added in all this crazy stuff which you know adding to a remaster is not bad i mean gear the war ultimate edition is my favorite one they added four new missions to the campaign it's beautiful but the way that they added in those weapons into the loot box system it sucked it really did although halo 2 anniversary and modern warfare remastered are still up there as top tier remasters I don't think that anything will beat Gears of War Ultimate Edition. So anyways, I mean, I, I will talk about the multiplayer, I guess, a little bit, but really nothing changes. It's just, you know, they add in a couple of skins, which is cool, you know. It is cool to see the, the skins in use, but um, it's really not like, you know, they added in a battle pass or microtransactions or anything. They literally just added in... <laughs> You know weapon skins you can buy for like 99 cents or something um, so nothing crazy but still cool so anyways i'm gonna end the video right here thank you for watching like and subscribe i will see you guys in the next video and i don't know i mean i i will definitely make more of these um because they're, they're just fun to make and of course, like I said in my last video, I am making music. If you like my music, be sure to check it out. Um, you know, I'm probably going to have like a sample of it play at the end. Although, I like to play unreleased music at the end just to mess with people and be like, ha, you know, I have unreleased music of my music because it's my music. I know, I'm not funny. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. College music fame, that's all in the scheme Cosmic Squad, that's the team Tear every beat apart right at the seam All I can do now is daydream of what I'm gonna do When I'm mainstream Call me Scotty cause I've been beaming up, yeah Call me Pippin cause I've been laying up, ooh Y'all know I ain't an anomaly I realign my grades in astronomy Got so many bars, they follow me Got so many issues, they Apollo 13 I ain't never seen Making money, making money, that ain't my dream College music fame, that's all in the scheme